Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 215. Man, that feels like a big number. All right, we're halfway, or we're getting into July, halfway through the year, all that good stuff. We're going to do this meeting like we did the last meeting, which means we're going to do a roll call. If you're here, say hi. Oh, hey, look, you could tell we already started this meeting once. This is part two. No, this is this is the first time through. I just had a glitch. Now everybody can say it, hear me. Jacob, thank you for saying hi. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, we're doing roll call. Thank you, Jacob. And I'm going to remind you that these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Then we're going to do triage. We're going to do the new issues like we usually do. And then we're going to do a design discussion covering those things that aren't going through email um, very smoothly. So we'll have those. We have like two of those, I think. Now, hopefully we'll knock one of them out today. And then we'll do the triage of the old V4 issues. That's the thing that's relatively new where we're trying to go back and figure out um, how much of the V4 issues are we keeping in V4? What are we sending out? And make sure they all get assigned to somebody to be looked at. All right. And then as always, we'll do questions, comments at the end. So to get started, we're going to triage of the new issues. Bob, ready? I am still ready. Still ready. I love it. All right, we already had a quick conversation about this burn does not repair, and Bob's not prepared to break precedent, as he said. So we're going to skip this first one. The second one is that it's strange that Wix chooses to output this to um, the temp folder, and I agree. So I think we should reopen this and fix it in V4. So go ahead and give this to me, and we'll pick a better default location, because that one is definitely not the right one. Temp is a very strange place. Probably a hung hangover, a hungover, a hangover from doing everything through unit tests and not really keeping track of what the command line did at the end. And when I run it, I'm sure I'm just giving the dash O switch all the time. So let's go ahead and um, open. Let's reopen this, and then you can sign it to me in V4. So what about the output? Should it be printing anything? No. We are reducing output. In fact, I'm seeing a, a slight discussion about removing the logo printout by default from everything. So I'm watching that one to see if they get rid of it on MS Build and .NET Build and all that stuff so that we don't print anything by default, I don't think. Mm. MS Build Minimal got it right. OK. Um, but this one's about the output location, and we should definitely be doing that correctly. Agreed. Yep. Um, Wix help needs to print semantic version. Okay, yep, give that to me. What number is it putting? Oh, that's, yeah, okay, that's definitely wrong. Cool. Yep, give that to me. Fix that. Can't devote, oh, shoot, did I not? I didn't fix this already. All right, give this to me. I will look at this today. I totally blanked on this one. Thanks for opening it, Sean. I saw someone mention it. And give this to me. I will take care of this. Um, changes in Google Chrome that finally caught up to us. I'll fix that and get the download working again there. Um, bundle doesn't delete cache for MSI package during minor upgrade. Um, ask for a log file. Something not working quite well. What do we want to do? Um, yeah, I... This should be a discussion. Uh, there's a bug. Oh, you, okay. So you saw the bug, right? You can see it. That's from the log, yeah. The, okay. the log shows it. It's okay. The, okay. Um, yeah, I'd expect the, the cache removal to, to, you know, happen, and it's not. Well, it's, it's detecting them as the same package pretty much so when you do the minor upgrade the old bundle is seeing that it's superseded right so it's not doing anything about it okay more minor upgrade things um where do i we don't know it? how to fix it no yeah. i don't either that's that's yeah i got i got to the point where i saw the undesirable behavior and then went huh okay so where are we putting it i mean if sean or i'm not going to look at it so if sean or bob you guys aren't interested in it then i would put it in the 
the place where bugs go to sit until someone wants to go dig into them. I mean, I guess 4x, but I don't like I don't know how to fix it. Yep. Okay. Whip required. <laughs> The hint that it needs a design. Okay. Uh, West MSI detected as ransom. This isn't ours. This isn't a bug. This isn't a bug. This is a discussion. This is a discussion. This should go away as a support issue. We can go talk about it in the discussion. Um. So that's not uh, NuGet dependencies lost when pa when packaged a CA DLL. I assume this is something to do with the DTF projects or SFX CA. Yeah. Or make SFX CA. Right. And it's not behaving well with NuGet packages. So, which I uh, guess something. And it's a VB project, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. Hmm. Um, I asked for a, a log, a build log, since I'm not you know, really set up to reproduce it, and so far I have not gotten one. I'd hold this for another meeting to see if we get feedback. Okay. It's it's using packages.config style packages, so I can't picture why it would you know be problematic. Those are normal references. They're yeah, there's nothing magical there. Yep. Visual Studio 2022 integration. Yeah, we get to that later. Although someone's kind of working on it on the side, which is great. I'm glad someone's already started on it, but not in a hurry to hit the previews, which I think Blair said. Yeah, we don't embrace the previews on Visual Studio. -isms. If a preview version can be made earlier, well, no, because we're not working on it. But if someone fixes it, which someone is working on it, which I think is great, um, then we'll see if they get their PR. They're still in a draft PR. So anyway, that's a future problem. We can stick it in four. Yeah, we probably should stick it in 4.0 for now, I guess. Let's put it in 4.0. We won't lose it there. Um, and we'll come back to it. Uh, Wix identifier, custom actions could not be found. Preview zero. I Yeah, OK, right. What Bob said, IS isn't part of preview zero. So we found a bug. But yay, this can go in four. Oh, is it already fixed, Bob, or is it no. still? No. All right. No, Great. I'll take it. Great. Yes, thank you for trying out something that we knew didn't work. We'll take the bug, and we'll get that. Um, standard directory element description that works schema. Yes, uh, you can give this. Oh, it's, I already took it. Right. I remember seeing this. I have already fixed this on my local computer. I haven't pushed it. So I agree with all of these things, that this should be documented well. Go ahead and give this to me in 4.0, and I am making progress on that. Uh, Wix4 table definition in simple installer. What the heck? Oh, Blair. Fine. Um, give this to me. This is terrible. This is the... T Bob, would you mind editing the title to make that the title? Oh, I think... Oh, he probably just pushed the button to create it from the discussion. I wonder if this is what the discussion pushing a button on it gives you. Probably. Yeah. Create issue from discussion. Right. I bet that's what it does. All right. Grumble, grumble. Yeah, except that it gives you this, which is not at all what we want. Anyway, give it to me, and I will definitely take care of this. This is exactly what I thought it was. Um, erroneous function call in touchfile.cpp. Oh, this is just, he opened and fixed these that fast. That's yep. great. Let's go ahead and give these next two to him and put them in 4.0 since that's where they're fixed. That's great. Core integration host with access violation during MSI database import. Hmm, p invoke problem, huh? Probably. It can only not happen once. Yeah, What's that's that? the problem. What? It only happened once. Oh. Oh. Strange that, what is this? That's an odd call stack, isn't it? Yeah. 
very odd call stack. All right. Um, yeah, give it to me and put it in 4.0. It's in my world. Bundle execute package cache folders not accessible to the BA process. Core permission packages. Should it be? Oh, oh, the property. The property's not set. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, something to fix, Sean? Oh, you've already signed it to yourself. All right. Yeah, I'll fix it. All right. In four. In four. All right. Wow, that went pretty smoothly. Too smoothly. You're too fast. I'm having trouble keeping up. Sorry, but yes. All right. I need to go fix the static configuration of the Azure site. That's going to be straightforward to fix. But uh. Okay. All right. Well, this next part you're going to love then, Bob. I need to give Bob a breather here to catch up. Oh, sorry, Jacob. I wasn't looking. Is this reproducible in the latest RTM? Which one are we? Which one was that comment on? Do you remember? It was the doesn't delete cache. Doesn't 6477. Delete cache. Okay. And so yeah, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. All right. You ready to roll, Bob? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh well, this next thing is not my part. Design discussions. I took the next one off the list: burn, reinstall mode, handling, and mend. And at this point, I will sit back and let the people that actually understand what's going on in this one take over. There's actually one more oh. missing here, okay. which is the NetFX uh, signature verification stuff. Okay, I will get that on the list. All right, I will... Sean, Bob, do you guys want to recast this? Uh, I guess uh, Fire Giant added the mend action, package action in v4 where it will do a special reinstall mode instead of the normal repair it's just what is it just it's just doing the files it's it's soft repair versus hard repair and office office had this option back in the long ago time of doing a repair and, or a reinstall what burn today does as repair is what office called a reinstall because it you know tends to overwrite most everything um, mend was the what office calls repair in that it's only supposed to you know touch stuff that's missing or wrong that was the purpose of mend basically don't don't reinstall something if it doesn't need to be reinstalled because that's going to you know trigger custom actions that are triggered on on the component action state and um, you know therefore be more likely to you know need a reboot for example but you still want you know you want to be able to repair stuff that's broken so repair broken stuff, don't repair everything. That's the purpose of mend. And I was never happy with the name, but we kind of went around on that a few times. And then someone created a feature request. Uh, it was, we had that number originally, but I guess it was lost, but uh, someone was asking when they ask for a repair action for a package, they want to be able to configure all the different options that MSI exposes. Well, the feature request was to allow it for install, not for repair. I don't remember that part of it. <laughs> well, I do because that that's the part that made me roll my eyes. It's, you know, it, it's a, it's a sledgehammer workaround um, for, for, for example, trying to downgrade uh, DLLs. If you okay. supply, you know, the, the hard repair, the hard repair reinstall mode switches, then you can 
<laughs> you are more likely to be able to downgrade files um, because the default won't do that. And I forget which letter it is, but one of the switches says, you know, reinstall regardless of version. So downgrade file downgrades can are more likely to succeed that way. But it's one of those, you know, yes, yes, that that will solve, you know, one class of problem during install. But is it going to work during, you know, upgrade? No. Um, is it going to mess stuff up? Quite possibly. Um, and it's completely inappropriate for shared components, of course. Anyway, uh, it, so it's related, but it, it didn't, it wasn't about, you know, mend versus repair. Now that said, there's some, yeah, there's good potential for one solution to mend versus repair to also support solving this other request. For some reason, I always assumed to, they were asking for repair, but I guess not. I'm, I'm highly confident that, it, unless we're talking about different requests, I'm highly confident the, the, one, the one I saw uh, was about forcing a reinstall mode during install. But this is all, this is in a Wix Dev's thread. And I think you proposed the idea of a, of a per package callback to, you know, support some level of, of uh, control over reinstall mode. And that, so that, that approach would basically, you know, would potentially kill two birds with one stone. Poor birds. I'm pretty sure this is what the one I was thinking of. A bundle level configuration. See, I probably saw that the actions we are triggering on the MSIs repair, modify, et cetera. That's why I assumed it was always in maintenance mode. They Right, right. Well, I mean, it kind of is because they are talking here about upgrades. But um, yeah, I think the most powerful feature would be just letting them always customize reinstall mode. That would be the most powerful. It would be the most likely to cause problems, but. But you need a custom BA to do this anyway, so why not? Well, let them shoot themselves in the foot if they're already writing a custom BA. If they're already loading the gun, yes. Um, the well, the simplest solution is to not complain if someone passes reinstall mode as an MSI property. And in fact, people do that today. Wix three warns Wix four errors when you do this. So it's, you know, there, there's one, that's one solution. Take out the error. Don't even make it a warning. Let them, you know, do whatever you want. Um, what you and I were talking about in email was, yeah, the idea of, like I said, you know, per package uh, callback that would let the BA, uh, you know, Either give it complete control over reinstall mode for for sorry for you know an MSI package callback um, or you know more nuanced control um, and I don't I have zero problem with that I mean I think we have to find the <laughs> I would vote for more nuanced control um, but I you know that feels appropriate to me. Um, and that would let a BA, uh, you know, implement the soft repair or mend functionality um, 
because like uh, as I recall, we did not implement a top level action mend. It was per package anyway, so uh, you needed a BA to request it. Right. And for Jacob's question, you could technically have a different variable for each MSI to set the MSI property. So it's not true that they would have to be all the same. Yeah, it definitely, it can't be a top you know, bundle level setting. It would have to be per package because, you know, even, um, <laughs> again, you don't want to use, you don't want to force a reinstall mode all the time. You know, if you don't need it, you shouldn't use it. It's only going to, it, it can solve problems, but it can also cause them. So you definitely want like a per package, uh, you know, per package level control. Isolate the problematic stuff in its own package, force the reinstall mode there. Um, that, yep, yeah, again, that's that's reasonable because you do end up in this, you know, situation when, you yeah, know, frankly, there's not a lot you can do um, without, you yeah, know, doing a, a bunch of Solutions to this problem tend to involve more hacking than the the you know a proposed the proposed solution would. So Jacob, like they can set the reinstall mode. They have to set the reinstall mode MSI property for every package in the bundle. So they're not forced to set the value of that MSI property in each package to the same variable. I'm just trying to say that, you know, it's, it's not true that they have to all be the same. They could, if they use the same it could. burn variable for your MSI property, but right, exactly. Or it could be different. Or it could be one for one class of MSI, another for another class of MSI, whatever. They have that control. And they have that control today in V3 because it's just a warning, right? Yeah. But there was, you still needed the BA to take the variable from the command line yeah. and set it right. Yeah. Most people weren't looking for variables. They they wanted to author it. Yeah, I oh, think that's hammer. true. I see. Sledgehammer. I mean, they don't want to the, change it. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, sure. Some might want that control as like a you know, uh, the normal procedure doesn't work because of you know you already have product X on your machine, therefore pass this special switch and we'll you know, we'll hammer the the installer onto the machine. But most, most people are aware when they run into this problem of, of you know, like third party components getting downgraded, um, they're aware of the problem. They're aware that MSI doesn't like to downgrade. There you go. So it sounds like we don't want to uh, let people author this. Is that right? I I don't. Uh, it's it's not a, authoring like it is today. Well, okay, yeah, let's back up. Authoring like it is today by passing reinstall mode as a property is not a good solution. Um, there are too many scenarios that that this will not work in. Um, and, and part of it is just, you know, burn doesn't differentiate. It's using MSI property in, in the package and it's going to pass it every time for every operation. So the, the current hack of passing reinstall mode is, is not good. We should not encourage that. 
um, making it authorable via some other mechanism, an attribute on MSI package. Um, I'm not a fan of. I don't know if I'm actively opposed. I'm fairly comfortable making it something the BA can control because then someone is, you know, they're going through multiple levels to understand that this isn't the norm. We shouldn't make, we, sh we shouldn't pass out sledgehammers willy nilly. If you're going to use a sledgehammer, you should have to acknowledge the sledgehammerness of your solution. You have to get a license before you're allowed to drive, huh? Well, you know, I didn't want to go into licensing and, okay, yeah. but you should at least be aware. It shouldn't be, and the problem, the problem I see with, with, you know, with authoring is that it's, you know, it's easy. People pick up the reinstall mode trick on Stack Overflow. It's out there. Um, if we add an attribute, uh, it's easy, and therefore, again, Stack Overflowable, and you, you know, might not think about. You, you, there are implications. You have to think about the implications. Um, also, making it authorable, I think we'd have to, you know, that I, I don't know that it's the right way. And I think it's also more work, uh, you know, in the engine. Yeah, I'm fine with not allowing authoring. Um, in the BA, on the BA side, again, the only question is, do we, you know, do we give them full control over reinstall mode or do we, you know, are we passing, um, or letting the BA supply, I don't know, Booleans or a dial? Do we let them pick soft repair versus hard repair? I'm a little, wor again, I'm a little worried about, you know, giving the sledgehammer, because in part, if we, if we give someone complete control, then there's a, you know, there's a tacit, yes, we think you should do this. It's a good idea. Um, traditionally, Byrne has made those kinds of decisions without, without a lot of input, which is, you know, not always great. Um, it does lead to, you know, scenarios where Byrne can't do something important. Yeah, if we don't let them get have full control, like we just create an enum with here's repair or soft repair and here's full repair, and we could just keep on adding more and more combinations if sure. worse comes to worse. Right, right. Yeah, because there's, there's really um, uh, four. I think there's <laughs> I think there's four options there um, uh, because you know you can you can say oh, hold on oh right dope you have four D is the the harsh one um, reinstall if the file is missing or a different version is present meaning downgrading um, O is if the file is missing or an older version, which is the MSI default, um, P reinstall only if the file is missing. So that's like a weak repair. And then E is reinstall if the file is missing or equal or older version. And that's like, oh, my files got corrupt because of cosmic rays. Most of the rest, oh, there's also A, which is the complete hammer. Um, most of the rest you don't really need control over. So it really is kind of the dial of, of file versioning override. But then we would have to come up with names for all these combinations. Or is there already widely recognized names for these? Yeah, no, no. I, I think the enum values would be, you know, 
Missing, missing or older. Missing equal or older. <laughs> missing or different. I mean, it's MSI specific, so. I mean, it would be easier if we didn't have to name things. <laughs> Yeah. If I had eight kids, I'd just call them one, two, three, four, no, it's not. I never once considered having eight kids. Good call. Although it would be kind of cool to be, you know, number one kid. <laughs> so for me, it basically boils down, do we give them, you know, all, all of the options, uh, you, you know, at a certain point, I'm like, yeah, okay. For me, it's a balance between, you know, making the feature powerful enough to get the job done versus making it, um, I don't want to say too easy, but but that's pretty much what I mean. That's a, For me, that's the difference between making it authorable and, ma and making it a a capability of the BA. If you're doing a BA, you you can, if you're doing a BA, you can already you know do some annoying stuff to the user's computer. So um, but I'm okay expecting a certain amount of responsibility once you're writing a BA. Yeah, I'm still leaning towards full control. Yeah, I I'd, I'd be fine. There there are basic there are five values here. I think we can yeah. come up with some very boring names pretty easily. Non-boring names would be harder. I agree with that. But there is a letter A which is force all files. That I mean, come on. That's sledgehammer. We could name that one sledgehammer no problem. <laughs> Isn't there a song called Sledgehammer from the 80s? There is Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Oh my God, I knew that. So this would get rid of Mend, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be fine if it got rid of Mend. To an extent, it's like, it... it <laughs> It could also get rid of repair. Um, I'm not sure we want to go that far, though. Uh, interesting. I mean, to an extent, a repair is just an install with a different reinstall mode. I thought they were different. I forgot. The MSA API always confuses me on this point. Yes. Yeah, I know. There are there are functions like like install product and configure product? Yes. But we don't Yeah. Um All right. So I'd be fine if this work happened. I'm not interested in doing it because I'm still at the, you know. I'm still uncomfortable with some of the implications, but I would I would rally behind anyone wanting to do the implementation and design. And all eyes turn to Sean. <laughs> Sorry, it's a radio play. I have to, you know, expo. <laughs> stage stage direction by Rob. I'm just saying. I mean, I I guess I could do this. With a better script. No, sorry. Um, how 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 interested are you in in getting rid of men? I I appreciate the the getting rid of men. I don't know. I don't know how much you care about the other feature requests. Maybe put them together, and it's more interesting. I like giving more power to the BA. I don't like people being blocked by things that they can't work around. Right. So if we 
if v4 is blocking install reinstall mode where v3 didn't then i think we really need to have a replacement yeah okay i so that the net result that we bring this issue to 40 assign to sean and go Do we have yeah. an issue? Yep. Or are you talking about the feature request? No, the sorry, the issue that I have up now. Yeah, I guess it's a feature request. Sorry, what? What? Is issue sorry, in the I'm loosest of terms. Too, feature request. Too many windows. Too many You're windows. Right. You're right. So, uh, this is fifty nine eleven. Yes. Okay. Fifty nine eleven. I should just say the number before I start talking about any of these issues, and I would make this entire radio show go much smoother. All right. Okay. Um, because this this issue seems to capture it pretty well. Yeah. Um, if not the entire implementation, but the desire. And it's closer than what MEND represents. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we want to bring this into preview one. Uh, yeah, in four O. Yes. Yeah. Preview one. Yes. Every. Yes. And people will no longer be blocked, like they were not blocked in three, and maybe better. Okay. So yay! I will add another item to this list, and in two weeks we will tackle the search elements or something, unless something else more higher priority pops up. 1016. All right. So let's give it, let's see how far 15 minutes get us on the V4 issues. Just curious. And then we'll go from there. Let's see if we want to keep rolling. Okay. So back to the web. As the slide says. All right. So we got through 4791, according to my back the envelope calculations from scanning the video from last week, and are on to um, 4825. Okay, so we're we're ascending. Yes, order. we are ascending. The reason we're ascending is because things get added to the end, and it's easier right. to <laughs> triage from the very beginning. So we are that ascending. That was my confusion. Yes, we are ascending. So we are also, the theory was the old issues would be harder than the newer ones, or at least the older ones were more likely to get tossed. So, because presumably the newer ones were under the new way of thinking or the more recent way of thinking, and thus we're going to keep them. Anyway, um, .NET tracing capabilities, .NET tool in Wix toolchain. I want to have, uh, this is. What will we collect? How do we change the messaging? Yeah, there's a lot of questions about this. Um, I don't know that we're going to do this. There's not enough data here to even know. I don't think we're doing this, right? Cause... Yeah, I don't know. Um... Besides, no, 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 let's let's punt this. .NET Core has a new way that they're starting to move towards tracing their world. Um, right, right. If anything, we would I, do that. I, I'm, yeah, well, or... Which is ETW-based, well, I, I think. I was, yeah, I was going to say, the .NET Core stuff is ETW-based, which is where we would go, I think, anyway, Yeah. As, you know, for living on Windows. But it's not clear to me what... It's not clear to me what we get over over just better logging in general. I mean, okay, lots lots of diagnostic points. I don't know. I, I yeah, that's. I mean, I guess we captured that in the. I'm guessing that second comment is you know notes from triage. Yeah. What do we collect? How do we collect it? I don't know. I'm not sure what this would tell us. I don't think this sticks. 
um, support Windows Server Core without WoW 64. So this is 64-bit, actually. This should be duped to the 64-bit thing. Using, oh, we're using this issue for ARM, ARM 64 custom actions? Okay. Okay. I guess this is collecting them all, then. x86, x64. Okay. Uh, that's amusing because I commented how the Visual Studio extension is x86 only because so. <laughs> and yeah. two months later, three months later, it no longer was. So that will right. learn me. Yep, that'll get you. Although to be fair, they don't do x86 at all anymore. So there's that. Right. Um. Okay. So. I guess we're keeping this. This definitely is staying because this is tracking the 64-bit work. Which so. means it should go into preview one. Yes. Burn container should be abstracted. This is yours, Bob, your idea. Yeah. Um, not going to happen in 4.0. Would need to happen in a .o. So I don't want to lose it. Okay. I mean, I still would really like to get um well so this was okay right this was half of the um of the idea of supporting lzma instead of cabs yep or better compression better compression um, yeah. and so the first half of it was let's get it out of you know let's make let's not keep it as something that's burn specific move it into dutil get it all working there then the second half would be burn. Um, and I actually did that, as you can see, years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it needs more work. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm comfortable moving this to be done next. Okay. If you want to keep it, it's assigned to you. That's fine. If you want to yeah. keep poking at it, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I do want LCMA. Yep, I hear you. I, it would be a good thing. Um, uh, this is probably a little late to do in four. No, I guess, I mean, I don't know. Uh, XML attribute returning S false when an attribute's not found instead of returning E not found. I don't know if there's ever a good time to tackle this. Yeah, this is just a massive breaking change that and generally, I agree with the sentiment. Um, it's the effort that I'm not excited about. It'd be, yeah. yeah. Sean, do you have any opinions on this? Like, strongly agree, disagree, or just nah, way too much effort to bother with? Yeah, it's probably too much effort for me to do. But if someone wants to do it, then that's fine. Yeah, so you're not opposed to it, is what I'm hearing, but you're not you're not um, motivated by it. That's totally reasonable. I, I think this goes vnext. I think we should reiterate it again in vnext, like if we don't have other things that are more pressing. But I would have had a hard time putting this above any of the other stuff that I did in v4. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's mo well, it's mostly a cleanliness issue, and yeah. hygiene is good. Um, uh, but also truthfully, I'd like to, I'd like us to look again, be next, um, into mechanisms that have us relying less on XML. Um, oh, like for okay. example, the, the burn manifest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's very, there's almost no reason for that to be XML. Except that um, it's easy to view it when you dump it, but I guess we could dump it back to XML or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, I mean, we uh, it, it it's not like there's a huge code cost because yeah, the actual parsing is in the OS, but yeah, the bulk uh, of the parsing is in the OS, yeah. But certainly we have we have a lot of very repetitive boilerplate code right. uh, to parse the manifest that right. we could probably avoid. Right. Where if you could use something like Message Pack or whatever that could load it straight out, then exactly. That would be nicer, I suppose. Or definitely would be nicer. Yep, I hear you. Okay, so V next. Not prepared to get rid of it, but we'll see. All right, let's roll again. 
Related bundle logging doesn't respect the parent bundle log switch. Uh, Rob, what's your query? Because I'm seeing extra items in here. Uh, you're seeing more than I'm seeing? You probably uh, need to refresh before you switch the page because you we yeah. took oh, some Oh, out. right. Yes, you're right. When we take them out, then the, I missed multi-instance. Let's see. Wow, a native version of the tools does not yeah, match the installer native. version. Yeah, that's okay. Yep. Um, yeah, give this. Oh, this is assigned to me. Yeah, no, this should stay here. I want to. I want to do a pass on all the version numbers. I got another bug just like this one earlier today, but it was like the numbers are four zero 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 zero. So, yes, I will put these two together. Okay. Yes, we should do the right thing there. Uh, V4 Visual Studio 2015, missing variables of candlelight command. Yeah, this is MS build. Yep, sign me. Yep, that's known. Yeah, we're back to this. Add multi-instance attribute to major upgrade. This is extending multi-instancing to major upgrades. Works, also works with multiple instances, right? Not the upgrade code, is it? Yep. Yep. Um, we're not doing this in four, are we? I really don't care about instance transforms. Neither do I. Um, yeah, so this goes into the, yeah, if someone else wants to do it, the, the respawn bucket of, yeah, we're not doing it, but someone else could. Okay. All right. I hit refresh. Nothing changed. I think that's fast enough. All right. Related bundle logging doesn't respect parent bundle log switch. That's interesting that we didn't pass that along. Well, it would overwrite the log <laughs> if you passed it along. Oh, I guess it would. It would have to add some piece of information, wouldn't it? You'd have to like pick a folder saying, I want all the f logs going in this folder and then let all the bundles just write their logs to that folder. Well, no, what should you, no, you, you specify the root one and then we write all the other ones based off that root one. So then the related bundles could follow the same um, pattern. Yeah, whip required. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Whip required, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, is this going in four? I'm not doing it. No, I think we have our answer. All right. Yeah, I kind of figure that's kind of where we're at, given all the other things that are going on. Sean's not in. It's going. It's not going. Related bundle, dependent bundles, actions should be opt in. I'm not, not doing right. anything for related bundles. <laughs> All right, uh, Bob. I'm I'm curious about what I was working on when I entered these bugs. I think I remember. And yeah. Um, and I agree with my with my comment, surprisingly, um, that a BA can take care of it. So I'm actually fine with closing this. Great. That VAs have the control they need. That's great. Um, can't set IS web pool. Yes, it would be great to have more things set in IS. Oh man, this has been going for a while. Hey, look, I can write PowerShell to do it. Yes, you can. Um, and then this is a pull request that adding support for it, sort of. Do not merge. All right. Lovely. From ancient history. Um, Mr. Cooper has left the building. So um, other things we should, what are we going to do with this? Drop it and respawn? It's like, yeah, someone could totally do this. It would be great if someone did this.
thoughts, opinions? None? I'm not going to get any help here. Uh, I yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's let's put it out there as the, the off to respond. So yeah, totally. Someone could do that if they wanted. That would be great. Support for import before and after targets in the Wix installation directory. Yeah, that this should be assigned. Let's go ahead and give this to me. I'm hoping that this all gets done the same. Um, yeah from the common targets. Yeah, so yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yep, give that to me. I'm hoping I'm gonna make us like ever, like much more like C-sharp. Um, MSP not removed when patch bundle is uninstalled. Any thoughts, Sean, otherwise? I really need someone to document related bundles before I can do any of these. Uh, well, so you have the all answer... the code. What else do you need? It got real. I don't know that I even know how it works anymore, given all the stuff that Visual Studio did to it. I sure. also have no idea on that. I, I, I've been it's patching pretty... it together, but as a collective whole, I have not sat down and gone, what did they do here? I mean, it was, up, it was up to me I would remove patch and add on related bundles because no one knows what they're supposed to do. Uh, I think the, the pro so the problem is the problem is we got into this this mode where where again, we we made stuff authorable, um, but to really use it, you need to be using a, a custom BA. And related bundles, other than upgrade, which just you know works as you'd expect, um, rather than than settling on you know the BA doing the work, we added these different types of related bundles to have slightly different behavior, and didn't document it or anything, so. Yeah, we end up in this weird state where you still need a custom BA to make the scenarios that, you know, the document, the le missing documentation would kind of suggest it, you know, just magically works. Well, you don't, no, you don't need, you don't need custom BA for related bundles to work. Well, uh, okay. like add-on bundles just work out of the box, right? They're, they're very simple and straightforward. Now, patch bundles are, are weirder, yeah. Um, and patching in general is kind of a mess, and it only got more worse with the VS update changes that they were making at the time. So, um, on the other hand, that's the you know use case for patch related bundles. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It's I don't know how many people use patch related bundles. That's fair. Add-ons, I've had a couple of customers where I'm like, this is what you can do with add-on bundles. And they're like, that sounds great. That's exactly what we want. We want this add-on thing added on to the main thing. Right. When you uninstall the main thing, the add-on goes away. Yes, yes, great. That's all they wanted done. So those are relatively straightforward. So the patching behavior is definitely complicated. Um, so I don't think we're fixing this in four, right? We're just not looking at this in four at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. It, 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 I think we need a, um, yeah, we need a, a, an excursion into the related bundle behavior. Um, documenting it would be a great outcome. Understanding it would also be nice. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty simple. It used to be fairly simple now, but it's not simple at all anymore. Not at all simple anymore. So, well, again, that's where I think the the intersection of authorability and BA control kind of got got lost. Maybe. So with this one now, what do we do? We be next. Be next. Uh, yep. And it's probably something that we need to think about in V5 is the whole what are we doing with related bundles 
from there. Yep. Especially given Sean's comment. Um, let's see, how many more do we have here? Let's do a couple more, see how they go. Um, 5255, request support for mathematical operations and dialogue controls. Um, it's not a bad idea, but Honestly, the theme mutal behavior of negative numbers is more useful than anything else, I think. But um, I thought this was MSI. This is yes. MSI. This is for MSI UI. Um, so the idea of adding the negatives on dialogue controls like you can for theme mutals, interesting. Um, but uh, I guess I don't want to do this in a four. No. Okay. I, 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 it, I don't want to spend. Next much time in MSI UI. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. MSI control type hyperlink doesn't support transparent and no prefix. Should it? Yeah, that's the question that has to be answered. He didn't answer your question, did he? Yeah. Oh, with transparent. All right. Give this to me. I'll, I'll fix the transparent part. That's fine. That's straightforward enough. We should at least support what's there. Um, light. It would be nice to keep the generate MSI database even if validation fails. We get that with intermediate folders. Yes. I think this now, give this to me and I will make sure that that is what I think it's doing. Improved syntax analysis. Ice bitmap, but the error is obvious. The property value cannot be found in the binary table. I see. The banner bitmap value is missing. It. Oh, a parenthesis. I'm kind of. I'm. Well, I'm. I was gonna say. I'm, this is more. This is more Wix than something that you would detect with an ice. Oh, I see. So because it didn't, it looks like a loc variable, but it's not a loc variable. And because it, it only it only looks like one to a human. Yes. Then because of that, we let it through. So he just basically wants to be more strict about going. Well, you know, that looks a lot like a preprocessor. You probably forgot a pair in there until that moment when it turns on tells you, no, I didn't forget it. <sighs> well, that's unlikely that that's going to happen. Um, We're not doing this in four. I mean, I get it. Let's put it in V next. There, there is something here to um, get deeper and deeper into um, understanding more and more of the strings, I guess. But yeah, Let's create a separate feed for minor releases of Wix. I don't think we're going to do this, Sean. I think we're, Are we're not to... building. Release feeds anymore? Um, well, I'm not sure <laughs> we're going to have them in four. Yeah. Um, the 310 is stable, but we're going to they are prompt an upgrade to 310.3. Yeah. This would be having more feeds for Wix. Um, but I actually do want, I mean, we talked about this before. I, I want to have like a separate release, like a development release even other NuGet packages where people can submit a pull request and then be able to have official-ish code to use. Yeah, I think that's just GitHub releases at this point. Like a lot of this is before we had the GitHub releases for storing things. How is this different from just tapping into the app bear feed? Or going straight to a build feed. The only problem with those is they disappear um, sooner. Is it uploading to an app bear feed right now? No, the, sure. the, the artifacts. You can get the artifacts out of the build. But that's, oh, the individual packages are no longer being published. Not right now. They're oh, okay. Not being published okay. to an individual feed. Oh. So I guess. That. But that that's some, that's but that's only because it wasn't in previous eras. Like, a, uh, yeah, which one do we pick? And then when you pick one, all the numbers are going to get messed up. And while I was doing the version numbers, I didn't want to get trapped in a feed and 
I was struggling to get the leading feeds and things like that. So I just didn't do any of that in the four things. So, um, but having a NuGet feed, but NuGet isn't enough for everything either. That's the tricky part. Um, Cause uh, like theme viewer yeah, yeah. is still an MSI. So we still have to have that solved um, somewhere to go get that. Um, I mean, that's kind of what I'm asking for is the have, weekly build um, place. Yeah, have a weekly build push the NuGet packages to its own feed, to a development feed. Right. That yeah, we could definitely do that. The development feed. Yes, I I avoid again. I avoided creative feedings in 4.0 preview zero because the inability to delete things um, or overwrite things if I got the version numbers wrong. But now that I'm Going to have a chance to go through it. Yeah, so we should definitely have a place where build the feeds go somewhere for development builds. That should definitely exist, and it does not yet. Um, so there's that. The final releases. Well, I'm figure out where theme viewer is going to go. That's right. We'll keep this because there's just some questions about I haven't decided where to put some things yet. So that aren't NuGet based in particular. So yeah, I'll have to, all right, there's that to solve. All right, we'll keep that around as we keep going, um, turn it out. Light misleading error message when last written date is not supported. Uh, and update their last written date to coincide with the last written date of course. Seems to be, oh, is the first date I see. So they set the date to something ancient. Interesting. A better error message for this. Uh, I don't even know what error message you'd get right now because we're not calling it the same way. I don't know that we're going to get a much better error message either. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure we're going to get a much better message from Cabutal either. Let's keep it open only because I want to try and see what kind of error messages we get out of cabs. And that'll remind me to do that. Um, okay. oh, this is votive. Build configuration and votive. Uh, this isn't in four. I don't know where we put these. This is just votive. General votive. Yeah. Do we, we have votive a votive milestone? milestone? Yeah. <laughs> no, we have a web milestone, though, so I'm but, thinking a votive milestone yeah, would be. But I think that's a good thing. Because it can then just run on its own. On its own. Allow contact and comment attributes in bundle element. This is for admin programs. Yeah. The bundle metal that already supports two properties. Bungie can use it to create entries. Okay. I mean, it's additive, so it doesn't have to be 4.0. Uh, and it doesn't sound like you're interested in doing it 4.0. No. Nope. So 4x it is. I agree. Cool. It could be additive. Uh, there should be a better error message than this. Failed to save resource. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'm all right with that. You can give this one to me. That'll be in the error buckets when doing some error handling. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to spit out a better error message. I've lost track of where I'm at. 4.0 feed can't be parsed by Adam. You know? All right, well, let's just hold on to that while we figure out the other one. They'll go together with the other feed questions for 4.0. Um, but yes, right now it cannot. Enhance Wix utility user element to include a comment property. Uh, Ron's working on this, right? Uh, yes. All right. And it's already signed to him. It's in Fora, so we're not going to send it out of Fora. 
Burn should support siloing AppX packages. That sounds like a great idea. Is it a four yes. thing? It, it might be additive, but <laughs> it's certainly a big ad. Yeah, it's definitely a big ad. Um, let's keep it. Okay. For now. All right. It's assigned to me. <laughs> Yeah, let me see you, John. All right, support for IS handler mappings. By bug for compat issues, all IS happy. Yeah, um, this goes the same place all the other IS stuff goes. Yeah, it'd be great if someone wants to do that work. Um, yeah, votive extension path too long. On um, Windows XP and Server 2003? Hmm, I think we can make this go away now. Yeah. Just don't care. Install message references options button even when suppress options UI equals yes. Um, thoughts? I mean, it'd be nice if someone could fix it. And right. when... I wonder if we could probably make it something that you could do with, you know, uh, theme mutal conditions. Yeah, it's just Maybe. this is kind of uh, I mean, it's almost like you want separate Wixel files for whether they specify that or not. Well, or at least separate strings in the Wixels, yeah. Yeah, it it would be interesting. I'd be. Oh, I'm. I'm about to express interest in a bug. That's always dangerous. Um. It'd be interesting to see if we could do this without code. If we could do this all with the immutable conditioning. Give it to me. I'll take a look. All right. I'm not terribly interested. So if it's at all difficult, I'll punt it. Yep. So, Sounds. Sounds like the right thing to do. Wix projects do not build with .NET build. And, nope, they do not yet build, but they're close. Um, and they will get better. Wix will that love, actually happen? Yeah, should do. I, I I think I had it almost working, and then there's all the hard, not hard, not hard. I think it'll work. I think it will work when I get all the other parts working that are complete mess right now. I mean, under the covers, .NET build is invoking MS build. Yeah, it would, yeah. Exactly, it's just kind of different. I, I expect it should all work. And if it doesn't, and it's impossible, then I will update that issue. But my expectation right go. now is that it will. 3.11 doesn't uninstall previous versions of embedded bundle during upgrade. Ah. How did that, what did they do that got it to be so big? It's bad XML, the confused oh, markdown. Is it XML? Okay. And they didn't delete the other part. Oh. Oh, protocol version. Oh, that breaking change. Is this just solved now? Because obviously the number changed. I think time has made this obsolete. Uh, you know, anybody that jumped, jumped over, this is a VS update breaking thing, right, Bob? Got added across versions or something. Yeah, they added the burn ancestors. Yep. So and that should have been a protocol change. And that should have bumped the protocol. Yeah. And we all missed it. So, all right. So I don't think, I think we're done. This just goes away now. And Sean is much more... Uh, exact about changing the protocol version, so I hope that that goes better. Candle 4 crashes. I've never done that. <laughs> I thought you were changing all the time with every... Oh, or is that the API version that was changing every time? Yeah. Not the protocol version. All right. So is the protocol version still 3.0 or whatever? Yeah, I haven't changed it. Oh. Well, then we probably should change it. Or well, hmm. That's an interesting point. Has it changed? Does it need to change? Well, shouldn't it change for this issue? 
That's a good point. Or has time made it not as big a thing and we just roll with it? Can four remove three? I don't know what oh. that means. I haven't looked into the code around this, so I don't know what exactly we're talking about. <laughs> we we'll probably change it just to not have to deal with the protocol. But does that mean we need to support? We, I mean, like we want progress from V3 built bundles, right? In a V4 bundle. Mm. Okay. I guess. Well, I that's... guess I'm asserting that. <laughs> Sounds like work to be done. I mean, I guess, what are we gaining by changing the version? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, aren't we fixing this issue? It sounds like the you know, removing protocol, removing the burn equal protocol equals burn attribute works around this problem, but we should have bumped the protocol with the whole burn ancestors thing. Right. So I agree we should have bumped it, you know what, five years ago? Yep. But are people upgrading from pre-burn ancestors to after Burn ancestors in 2021. Like, if they Is were that going the scenario that's that's broken. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I don't care about that. Yeah. I mean, I think the only way to run into this issue would be you're still on like three nine or earlier in 2021. And then in 2021, you're deciding to upgrade to 3.11 or 3.14. Or 4. Or 4. Okay. I, so I guess you know, my, my point is you might have a bundle that's that old as a redist or something. Yeah. But, uh, uh, <laughs> come up to more recent and then. Well, uh, I'm suggesting a redist that you don't have control over. It, as long as nothing's broken then I don't care. The removing the protocol, that's an easy workaround. Yep. I'm fine with that. Yep. I think that's the answer. Okay. So this is therefore we don't do anything with this bug. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Candle V4 crashes, non advertised class in this context. I think this is fixed, but leave it to me so I can double check it. Light fails to handle containers with relative path in the name. Okay. Uh, I think this is working now, but it's assigned to me, so I will double check to make sure and add a test if it isn't one. Localized build for Kazakh not working. And I think this hopefully is fixed with UTF-8, and it worked. Yay! Which means Wix4 should be solving this, because Wix4 should pick um, UTF-8 by default. So you want to keep this yes. in just for verification? Yep, I'll keep it just for adding the test because I'm not sure I've written a test for this particular okay. thing yet. Because um, I just flipped it to UTF-8 a long time ago and I don't know that I have all the tests in place for that, but there we go. All right, I think we'll stop there on page two. One, two, three, no, yeah, that'll work out. We'll keep going. So the last one we, we looked at was 5685. 5685. I say again for the record, 5685. Yes, I'm going to go write it down somewhere. <laughs> I have to go figure out where I'm going to write it down. There it is. That's the one that I wanted. 5685. All right. So, on that note, I think anything else people want to talk about? Stuff going on, discussions, ideas other items of interest.
One, two, three. All right, that's fine. All right, that's pretty good triage. We'll get through a page each time. What does that mean? We still have three pages left, I think. Yeah. I don't know what page. So do you think Jacob left or, yeah, he wanted to do his PR. What do I need to do before making an official PR? I don't, I don't know. Sean, do you know what he has to do to make an official PR? Um, I don't quite understand. I mean, I, th I thought we already agreed on the design, so it's just, I guess, going to the PR and marking it as ready, because it's a draft right now. Ah, well, yeah. Change the bit. Cool, Jacob? All right. All right. I still have this just in the registry. Having the binary file left around. Oh. So yeah, he's he ended up keeping the binary file and and yeah. adding writing to the registry. Right. Right. Which is fine, I think. It still should get cleaned up, right? Same like it was before. before. Yeah. Yeah, it should automatically be deleted with the, the original code. How much of IIS needs to be installed for build.command to work? You shouldn't need anything from IIS to be installed. Um, I don't think I have anything IS on my machine, and I was able to get built. No, uh, you probably have the, what are they called? The hostable web core. Tiny mm -hmm. side needs that. I mean, I think all you need is the features yeah. in Visual Studio. Like yeah. we already uploaded our configuration for Visual Studio, so yeah, that's all you that need. should have included in everything you needed. Yeah, I don't think we use it for anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So two weeks from now is July 22. I started seeing error messages today. I don't know what that means. Out of coffee? Um, don't know. So July 22nd, two weeks from now. That sounds about right. Um, so we'll do that in two weeks and we'll cover uh, probably more of the same, probably be almost exactly the same. So same kind of meeting, almost same content, just different specifics. We'll call it that. All right. So We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, Ron, some people usually hang around, so if you want to continue to talk about specific error messages that you're seeing, we can talk about those. Um, otherwise, for the rest of you, we're going to end the recording here. We'll be back in two weeks, two weeks, July 22nd, and do all this again. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.